Imagine it's your birthday. You're surrounded by friends and family and someone brings out your birthday cake. As you're about to blow out the candles, you tell yourself, this year is going to be different. This is the year I'm going to. Then you remember that you said the same thing last year. The goal didn't happen back then and chances are it's not going to happen this year either. But what if you can drastically increase the chances of you achieving your goals this time? Hi, I'm Angela from Growth Garden. In this video, let's uncover the three biggest reasons why you're not achieving your goals. We'll dive into three practical solutions that you can apply right away to overcome them. Each of these three solutions might sound really simple, but I promise that if you do all three of them, you will see and feel a tangible difference within just a matter of weeks. I personally tested many ideas from different self-help and business books. I found these three to work for me and my team every single time. Let's dive right in. Can you guess the first reason why you're not achieving your goals? It's because your goals have not been clearly defined. It might sound obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people make this mistake. For example, one of the most common personal goals is to get fit. But if you just pause and think about it, what does getting fit really mean? Is it to lose weight so you can fit into your clothes better? Build endurance so that you can climb the stairs without getting breathless? Or strengthen your muscles so you can carry your luggages without getting help? Well, the first step to achieving a goal is to make it crystal clear. And to do that, you must answer this question. What needs to happen within the next 12 months for this to become a great year for you? In another video, we discuss the significance of different planning horizons. But the best time frame to drive results is a one-year period that is short enough to plan in concrete terms and yet long enough to get meaningful results. Here are three sub-steps to help you crystallize your answers in actionable terms. First, let's write down the answers that come to mind to the earlier question. Narrow down to no more than three most important questions because we need to keep our goals top of mind and having too many goals will dilute our focus and attention. For example, one of your top goals could be to get fit enough to run a marathon in the next 12 months. The next mini step is to get a clear mental picture of what that would look and feel like. And to be honest with yourself, if it's a real goal that you will commit to, or is it just something that sounds nice on paper? For example, if you have never tried a marathon and don't even run regularly, would you truly train for a 42 km marathon run? After some reflection, you might realize that you just want to feel good about reaching a significant fitness milestone and to achieve it with your friends. So a half marathon of 21 kilometers would be really good enough. So now you're ready for the third mini step, which is to define your goal in simple, specific and measurable terms. Your goal for the marathon could now read, within the next 12 months, I will complete a 21 kilometers half marathon. Write this down and put it somewhere visible, such as in front of your computer or on your fridge. Remember how we said that we should limit ourselves to no more than three main goals? Well, that's really important because if anyone were to ask you the question, what must happen in the next 12 months for this to be a really good year for you? You should be able to answer it right away. That's when you know that your goals are clear and top of mind. So, what's your answer to the question? Leave your answer in the comments below. Now that we know what you want to achieve, the next question is, how are you going to get there? This is where the second major hurdle comes in. You don't have a concrete plan for your goal. 12 months might seem like a really long time, so we think that we can look back on our goal later. But before we know it, the days, weeks and months just tick by. And suddenly, we are out of time. And if you are last minute like me, you'll tend to wait until the very last minute to try and cram everything in. But that's not always possible. Maybe you can still train for a half marathon in a couple of months, but it will be really quite a stretch to try and do it in one week. Even if you find some hacks to get there, it will come at a significant strain to your body. So, the best solution is to break it down into quarters, then zooming on the immediate quarter, breaking it down into each month, week and day. You can set artificial timelines with mini rewards just to give yourself the motivation to keep moving forward. If done properly, this will result in compounding results which we'll explain shortly. For example, if the goal is to run a half marathon in 12 months, then you should be able to do 10 kilometers in 6 months and 5 kilometers in the next quarter. That's a simple linear plan dissected by quarters. Now, we just need to focus on the immediate quarter. A simple breakdown could be to hit 1 kilometers, 3 kilometers, and 5 kilometers by each of the 3 months. Then, we work out how exactly to achieve that. For example, for the first week, you could aim to do 400 meters of walk and jog three times a week. Then, we increase that to 500 meters the second week, 750 meters the third week, and by the fourth week, you will have hit one kilometers. Mark this on the world calendar and check off the activity after every session. This visual progress can be extremely motivating. You can boost the feel-good factor further by giving yourself an extra reward after each session. For example, have a relaxing bath, 
or maybe read your favorite book. What I just described was a simple linear breakdown of your goal. But here's the best part. When you follow through with consistent baby steps like these, you are likely to experience what we call the compound effect. Basically, your small daily choices turn into habits that add up to create cumulative results over time. So basically, your results don't come back in a straight line, but they go up like a curve. Back to the running example, you find that once you get into the habit of running 1 km 3 times a week, it becomes so much easier to increase to 2 km, 3 km, and so on. Any seasoned runner will be able to tell you that once you can hit 10 km regularly, you can almost certainly do a half marathon even if you haven't hit 21 km during your training. By now, we have set a clear goal for the year, broken it down into what to do every quarter, month, and week. And that brings us to the last big reason why we are failing to achieve our goals. Basically, we don't follow through on our plans or we fail to take consistent action. Have you ever woken up feeling tired, demotivated, and just overwhelmed with the number of things that you must do that day? Just thinking about your to-do list can be exhausting. And suddenly, going for a run seems like the last thing that you want to do. So you tell yourself, I'll just skip it today. And then you skip the next session and the next session. And before you know it, you have lost all momentum. There are so many reasons that we get distracted, demotivated, or procrastinate from doing what we know we should. We'll be covering those specifically in other videos, so do subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on them. Back to the challenge that we're addressing. If you're feeling unmotivated or overwhelmed, what is the one thing that you can do to stay on track for your goals? Again, I tried many methods, and the single most effective solution is this. Just set aside two hours on your schedule every week for your biggest goals. Make this non-negotiable and ideally schedule the session at the start of your week. So what are we going to do during the two hours? Well, it depends on your situation. If you're feeling overwhelmed, disorganized and unsure of what to do next, then use the time to take stock of where you stand. Are you still committed to your goals? What happened to your original plans? What are the new issues or distractions getting in your way? Use the time to crystallize your goals and revise your plan if necessary. Our circumstances change and it's perfectly fine to tweak your goal or adjust your strategy. That's much better than blindly following a plan that's no longer viable or feeling guilty about a goal that you're no longer committed to. For example, you might realize after two months that running is really not your thing. Well, go back to your fitness goal and ask yourself if you could achieve the same ends with other means such as tennis, rock climbing, pilates, or other sports activities. If so, commit to the new goal and create a new plan for it. Or perhaps you're still committed to your half marathon, but the evening slots are just not working out for you because your work often ends late and you just feel too tired to train. In that case, try shooting to a morning slot or you can even go to bed in your sportswear so you can hit the running tracks the moment you wake up. When we are crystal clear on what we want to do and how we want to do it, we'll somehow find the time and energy to actually get it done. It's usually when our goals or strategies are fuzzy that we start to lose motivation. So these two hours are really crucial to help you to review your goals and plans to stay on track. If you're absolutely clear on your goals and plans, then use these two hours to do some focused work on the high impact items that you've identified in your plan. This could be writing a book or planning your side hustle. The key is to make sure that you find a quiet place with no distractions. Then, turn off your mobile phones or put it in the next room. Switch off all the apps and notifications on your computer and put up a do not disturb sign so you can focus fully on your goals. Set a timer and keep going until the two hours is up. There's a whole bunch of signs behind why one and a half to two hours is the ideal duration for focus work. We'll be visiting this in a separate video on productivity habits. If you're looking for more ways to focus and get stuff done, these books were where I drew the most of my initial inspiration from. I've also included links to the books and book summaries for my business, reading graphics, in the description below. We've just discussed the three big reasons why you don't achieve your goals. The goal is unclear, we don't have a concrete plan, or we fail to execute the plan. We also explored three simple but powerful strategies to address those reasons. Often, the best solutions are the simplest and the most direct ones. If you actually apply all three strategies, you will start to see real progress on your goals. I look forward to hearing your experiences and stories in the comments below. Over the years, I realized that the process of setting and achieving goals doesn't happen in a straight line. No matter how disciplined we are, things crop up over time and plans change. This three-part strategy has helped me to regularly review and refine my approach in a simple, easy to remember way. I hope that it will help you too. To achieve our biggest goals in life, we need to concurrently hold on to our long-term vision and focus on what we can do right now. This is one of my top 10 success principles. Feel free to check out this video for the remaining 9 success principles. I'll see you there.